Welcome, and welcome to the program where wit and wisdom sometimes come off second best to lies and deceit. The first word today, a foal, Alan. A foal. Well, you wake up one morning, lovely, beautiful summer's day. You go down to your local greengrocers. And as you're walking down the street, all of a sudden, you hear a skid, bang. You look over the street, all of a sudden, you see the bread man. Just hit old Mrs. McGonigal from down the road. <laughs> She's lying on her back. Out, out for the count. But pure chance, the bread man who hit her happens to go in the back of his van. He's panicking at this stage, but he goes in the back of his van, opens the back doors, goes through his bread, loaves, whatever you, whatever you got, and brings out an a foe. Now, what an FO is, is an emergency electrical charger which brings old ladies, old local ladies, back to life. And only bread men have them. And mostly bread men you would find around maybe west or southern Scotland or whatever. <laughs> and uh, that's what happens. Brings it up, sticks it in her ears, hits a button, a foal. She shouts, she screams, she gets up, shouts, a foal! <laughs> and that's what it is. A foal. That's a very amusing answer, Alan, but somehow I can't see an old lady who's just been knocked down shouting, a foal. You can't see that. It's not true. Actually, what is true is what I'm going to tell you now. And a foal. Hmm. It's a summer evening. The sun's out. It's a glorious day. You decide to have a bit of a garden party. Now, you've invited a few <laughs> friends around, and of course you get in professional caterers, as you do. But you've had a great do altogether. There's about 50 people coming. The drinks are served, chilled. As you know, Alan, I know you know oh, about yeah. drinks, chilled, <laughs> of course. And uh, you have them there. You have the caterers' food lineup, tremendous spread all together. And people start tucking in. Everyone's having a great time. The next thing is, there's not enough sandwiches. Now, you have to go and renegotiate the price you first started with the caterers to make up more sandwiches. Now, the man who comes to make more sandwiches is called the lantern. <laughs> but, <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't believe it. <laughs> it's very true. You'll, you'll find out next week I'm having a party for. <laughs> so, the actual task that you give him of making up more sandwiches for a garden party is called a deferral. You say to him, call him on the old blower. You say, excuse me, having enough sandwiches, I need you to do me an deferral, which is the task of making more sandwiches. Not the preposterous task of an old lady. An deferral is the act of making more sandwiches. Oh. Oh. A foal it was, and this one is prow triller. Sandy. A prow triller is a very proud piece of English history. And I'm going to tell you why. Alan, pay attention to this. You I might always do. I always do. <laughs> you might learn something from this. And so a prow triller, very important part of our heritage, everyone, because in the early stages of the Crimean War, the troops were scarce for uniforms, you know, uniforms. So they had to get the local women to make up more uniforms because we couldn't have our chaps going out without any clothes, obviously. And I know you sometimes go out. <laughs> Where did you hear this information? No, I know you go out sometimes without any clothes, but this is no good for you then. They got the local women to make up extra uniforms, and they did a splendid job uh, with what was available to them at the time, which wasn't much, a few old coconut trees and a few branches, <laughs> olive trees, sort of thing, you find them out. They did a splendid job, made up a fine uniform, but the piece de resistance of the uniform was the splendid hat, which finished off a very <laughs> splendid sort of trilby sort of thing, and that was given the name the Prowl Triller, and that set off the whole outfit. And um, 
Of course, any fellow will look very splendid in his uniform, topped off with a prowl trailer. And that's what a prowl trailer is. Simple, really. What a load of nonsense. I've never had so... Uh, it's complete rubbish. So, sorry, Timothy, I, I have to disagree with that. Totally. Prowl trailer. Now, think about it. We go a long, long time ago. As, uh, Timothy, I would say yourself, you know, you'd be <laughs> interested interest in the old time and in, in doing a, a bit of singing with the old tipsy doodle dandy in you there. Am I right or wrong? Oh, you're right. <laughs> well, what a proud thriller really is. The majority of pubs that you're going to do these days and you go up and do a bit of singing, uh, anybody that knows anything about singing, it would be a karaoke. You know? And we all, everyone's done it before, I suppose. We had a few drinks in us and done our singing. But a prowl triller goes back to ancient Egypt. And that's what the Egyptians used to call a karaoke singer. But that, I must just add on this now, it's not the typical karaoke singer, it's someone who is really, really, really terrible at karaoke singing. Now, not like myself, as I'm bloody great, but... Uh, I don't know about that. Well, Timothy, I've heard you one night coming out of the pub, the Arlson's, in Kent Road, and it was fairly, fairly near a prowl singer. Prowl Triller singer, should I say? But, prowl Triller. An old Egyptian word for a damn good karaoke singer. Yeah. It's true.